Hello students, welcome to class. And we are now on page 80, unit 13, you can't miss it. Can you say that after me? You can't miss it. You must say the sound of the final T. Can't. You can't miss it. It. So there's two T's. You can't miss it. What does that mean? You can't miss it. This is a phrase. It's a phrase. And so remember, with a phrase, you cannot always cut each word and try to understand the meaning by each word. Usually we use the word miss by meaning, we mean not, I miss you. But here it's used in a different way. And so you have to think of the phrase, not each of the words. You can't miss it is used to say that it's impossible not to see or notice something. And so, for example, uh, to find my house, you come, you leave Sakram, and you come along the Sakram Road, and on the left side there is a tall purple building. You can't miss it. It means it's something that the tall purple building, it's impossible not to see. It's impossible not to notice. And so, uh, if you, you can talk about a location, and usually it is used to talk about a location. You can't miss it. It's so big, it's so beautiful, it's so colorful, there's something special and unique about it that it catches your eye. And so, you can't miss it. It means you, you will automatically pay attention to it. You will see it. And so you can't miss it. It's a big white building on the corner. You can't miss it. And so in this unit, we're going to be talking about giving directions. All right? And so word power, places, and things. Exercise A, where can you buy these things? Match the items with the places. And so first, let's look at the item because you may not be familiar with, you may not know about these items. Maybe you've never heard about aspirin or traveler's checks or something like that. But so I'm going to go through each one of them. There's eight, eight words. Word power, by the way, is vocabulary in New Interchange. And so aspirin, so you remember aspirin is medicine that will help you with a headache or if your body hurts someplace, if your back hurts or your leg hurts, uh, many times they will give you aspirin. Aspirin is the name, really the name of the medicine, but there's many other names also. Uh, Panadol is one of them. And so there's many different names of the medicine that is used to take away the pain when you hurt someplace in your body. But the general word that we're using in a new interchange is aspirin. So aspirin is a medicine that helps take away the pain in your body for a few hours. Usually it takes away the pain for three or four hours. Number two, traveler's check. So what is a traveler's check? A check, I believe in Khmer, we call it sight. And so we use a check when we don't want to use money. And so they don't, we don't use them so much anymore nowadays. We don't use checks so much anymore because we have ATMs and we have debit cards and we have credit cards. But still, we can use a check. Many people still use a check. And so it's a piece of paper that we get from the bank. And on the paper, it has the account number of our bank. And we, we write how much? $100, $1,000, $10,000. We sign our name and we give it to the person and it's the same as giving them money. When we give them a check for $100, it's the same as giving them money. But they have to go to the bank. They give the check to the bank and the bank gives them the $100 cash. 
And so a traveler's check, you know, a traveler, and so many people like to use traveler's checks when they go on vacation overseas because it's safe. If you bring cash, if you lose your cash, you have no money. Or if someone steals your cash, you have no money. But the traveler's check, you must sign it before you give the money. All right, and so a traveler's check is like money. You use it to pay for something, usually when you're on vacation overseas. Letter D is bread, of course. And so bread, uh, and by the way, uh, bread is an uncountable noun. We do not say, I want to buy some breads. We do not add the S to make it plural. An uncountable noun uh, has the plural and the singular in that word. So bread, I want to buy some bread, or I want to eat a piece of bread. Sandwich. And so a sandwich, I want to eat a sandwich, or I want to eat two sandwiches. Number five, a dictionary. You know what a dictionary is. A dictionary is a book that has thousands of words from A to Z, and it has the definition of the words. So you can buy the book, or you can go online nowadays. Stamps, a stamp a few stamps. So one stamp, a few stamps. You must say the S if you're saying the plural. The same with dictionaries, the same with sandwiches, but not bread. Stamps is if you want to mail something through the post office from one place to another place, you have to pay the post office. And the way that you pay the post office, you buy a stamp. And you put the stamp on the letter, or you put the stamp on the package, and that verifies that you've paid the money for the post office to send it for you. And then gasoline, of course. Gasoline, in uh, British English, they call it petrol. In American English, we call it gas. But in Khmer, ga, ga means something else. Gas in Khmer is what you cook your food on. Ga. Uh, but in American English, gas is the liquid that you put in your car or your motorcycle to make it go. But the long word is gasoline. And then a sweatshirt. A sweatshirt, this is a t-shirt that I'm wearing. This is a jacket. Uh, I have a sweatshirt. When it's cold, you wear a sweatshirt. And so a sweatshirt is thicker than a normal shirt. And so a sweatshirt keeps you warm in cold weather. All right, and so let's see. Let's look at the pictures. And in the pictures, what do we have? A bank, a drugstore, a bookstore, a gas station, a restaurant, a post office, a department store, a supermarket. Notice all of them have the single article, a, a bank. You need to say the K, bank. A drug store, drug. You need to say the G, g, drug store. A drug store, by the way, is a pharmacy. Some places they call it a drug store, some place they call it a pharmacy. And in England and Australia, sometimes they call it a chemist. A bookstore. Be sure and say the K. Bookstore. Book. Bookstore. A gas station. Be sure and say the S. Gas. Gas. Gas station. Two S's together. T-I-O-N. Shun. Station. Restaurant. It says restaurant. But the way we say it is restaurant, a restaurant, one restaurant. A post office, you need to say it clearly, post, S-T. There are many words in English that end with S-T or T-S. You must learn how to make that sound. Post, st, post office. Office, and don't forget, the C in office 
makes the S sound. And so you must say, it's not post office, office, post office, make the S sound. A department store. A department store is a store, we say store or market, where you can buy many different things. You can buy clothes, you can buy food, you can buy tools to repair your house, you can buy something for your car, and so we say there's many different departments. That's why we call it a department store. There's many different department departments for many different things. The store is organized with a department for men's clothes, a department for women's clothes, a department for children's clothes, a department for uh, household items for the kitchen, a department for household items for outside, a department for tools, and so many different departments. That's why we call it a department store. And a supermarket. We use different names for a supermarket. A market could chip sat from a but by super chip sat nerp. And so a supermarket means a big market or a big store. That also similar to a department store, in a supermarket there is the place you can buy meat, the place where you can buy milk and dairy products, place where you can buy uh, all different kinds of food and the, the supermarket is organized according to the sections where you can buy what you want to buy. We say supermarket or commonly where I come from we call it a grocery store. I'm going to the grocery store. All right, let's say these after me. All right, you see your screen. So, we buy aspirin at a drugstore. We buy aspirin at a pharmacy. We buy traveler's checks at a bank. We buy bread at a supermarket. We buy bread at a grocery store. We buy a sandwich at a restaurant. We buy a dictionary at a bookstore. We buy stamps at a post office. We buy gasoline at a gas station. We buy gas at a gas station. We buy a sweatshirt at a department store. All right, you're going to listen to this video again. Listen to how I say it, and then you say it after me. We have another slide. Now we're going to ask a question. Do you buy aspirin at a department store? No, we don't buy aspirin at a department store. Do you buy traveler's checks at a bookstore? No, we don't buy traveler's checks at a bookstore. Do you buy bread at a grocery store? Yes, we buy bread at a grocery store. Do you buy a sandwich at a gas station? No, we don't buy a sandwich at a gas station. Do you buy a dictionary at a restaurant? No, we don't buy a dictionary at a restaurant. Do you buy stamps at the post office? Yes, we buy stamps at the post office. Do you buy gas at a bank? No, we don't buy gas at a bank. Do you buy a sweatshirt at a drugstore? No, we don't buy a sweatshirt at a drugstore. 
And so listen to me say these sentences again. Listen at least two or three times and say it after me. And when you feel confident, send me your voice message and I want you here I want to hear you talk American English like me. All right? See you in the next lesson.